But at that point, the cell is getting so big that even though insulin keeps telling the fat cell to continue to grow, the fat cell stops listening and now starts leaking out fat. In other words, you now have a state where insulin is high, reflective of the insulin resistant body, but now also free fatty acids are high, reflective of an insulin resistant fat cell. And if we appreciate the fact that the fat cell is probably the first cell to become insulin resistant, that test becomes probably the most sensitive or earliest indicator, the canary in the metabolic coal mine warning the clinician, hey, this person doesn't have insulin resistance based on all these other tests that Ben just mentioned. Even their insulin might be at a normal-ish number, but if it's a normal-ish number and high free fatty acids, that's a worry. And so the, uh, the adipose IR index, which is what this is, will determine this. But it's interesting to note that there's differences. So anyone could look up this test, adipo-IR. Um, but men and women, the sexes have different numbers here because women naturally undergo lipolysis at a significantly higher rate than men do. Um, so women are naturally just burning fat at a slightly higher rate than men. So it, it, you take a healthy woman and a healthy man, her free fatty acid levels will naturally be higher than his. And so her adipo IR score naturally needs to be a little higher. So in women, the normal score is about nine. In men, the norm, well, that would be a warning if it's above nine, I should say. And in men, that number is much lower. It's about five because his free fatty acids should be lower. It's just one of the different, one of the many differences, of course, between men and women, which, which are real. You know, these are not the same sexes, not the same body type, but it's even reflected down to the very level of the biochemistry of the body and how the sexes use, uh, use energy. So I would actually kind of put it in that order, fasting insulin, HOMA, and then all the others. If insulin is high, which it is in this insulin resistant state, you can't burn those fats. That's the problem. Normally, if free fatty acids are going up in the blood, it's because insulin is low and so, insulin is low, and so the body's burning the fat very readily. Because right. as you noted, if, 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 if insulin is low, fat burning is elevated. <laughs> but with insulin being high, the body can't burn that fat. It has to store it. Another reason why I'm so fascinated by insulin is because, once again, insulin tells the body what to do with the energy that it has. And insulin abhors burning energy. It never wants to burn. It only wants to store. When your insulin levels are always high, you're always in storage mode. And so in between meals, when you're supposed to be able to tap into your own adipose tissue, into your own fat cells as fuel, your body's not letting you do that because your insulin levels are always high. So soon after eating, you're hungry again because you can't tap into your fat in between meals. So you're kind of constantly yeah. in a storage mode and you can't tap into your stored fuels. This is that's right. And it is documented. There is There are human studies to confirm everything you just said, including have groups of people eat two meals that are identical in calories. And the one that elicits the higher insulin spike will invariably lead to greater hunger sooner. In other words, the person gets hungrier sooner compared to the other meal, which had the same amount of calories, but a more modest insulin spike. At the same time, another group, totally different lab, a different study, found that when insulin spiked following a meal, the available ener the energy availability, they called it, which was the sum of all nutrients available in the blood, the sum of ketones, lactate, fatty acids, triglycerides, anything that could be a source of fuel, when they looked at the levels in the blood, when insulin spiked, they were all down. It followed, which, which makes sense because insulin wants right. to tuck everything away out of the blood. It wants to store it. And so what is in the blood goes down and that becomes a particular problem for the brain, which unlike muscle and liver and fat cells has no storage depot. It doesn't, you know, muscle and, and muscle and liver both have not only glycogen, but also triglyceride pools. And of course the fat cells have enormous triglyceride pools. The brain doesn't. So the brain is constantly dependent on the amount of energy that's available in the blood. And so if the energy in the blood starts to go down, the brain is panicking because it doesn't have its own reserve of energy it can rely on, unlike the other tissues I just mentioned. And so it starts demanding that the body start eating. In other words, promoting a sense of hunger, even though the person has hundreds of thousands of calories stored on their body, but the brain doesn't know that. It only can sense what's in the blood.